If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn them with me to the book of Mark, the 11th chapter of the book of Mark. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When you get it turned there to the book of Mark, the 11th chapter, I want you to, uh, I want you to stretch your hand up here to me. Every one of you, stretch your hand up this way. Just pray in the Spirit for a minute. Lord, I receive this blessing from my brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for thy blessed word that will set men and women free and teach them how to change things. Oh, God, your word is so anointed. Thank you, Lord, for dealing with Bob and Cindy to read your word in business and for their home. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My word is the answer and the healing for marriages. Bless God forever that marriages shall not die, but they shall live. My word is the answer for dead businesses. My word is the answer for your body if it's sick. My word is the answer for anything you want or ever will want, ever will need in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for thy word. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. I know that you've sent your word, I know that you sent your word. To, heal me. to heal me. Help me to apply it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. One time I had an experience with the Holy Ghost. You know, experiences with the Holy Ghost is always exciting. Praise God forever. And the Lord dealt with me about this last night. It started coming to me. And so uh, he just wants me to teach it to you tonight so you'll know and have, have more respect for the Bible than you ever had before. And know that God will do something with the words that you speak. You're not left alone. But I was in Kentucky. With, uh, it's the first time I ever, Bob's father was a doctor, a theologian. But I, you know, uh, us Baptist denomination, we have a lot of doctors, a lot of theologians. So I went to Kentucky one time to hold a meeting for a fellow that was a Southern Baptist doctor. But he's the first man that I've ever helped one that was a double doctor. He had two doctor degrees. He said, I said, are you a double doctor? And he said, yeah, I'm a double doctor, Brother Norville. I says, well, praise the Lord. And he had more people, now listen closely, he had more people in his church than they had in the town. They come from everywhere. There's more people that went to his church than was the population of that city. That same thing is going to happen, that same thing is going to happen to that young boy down there in Rockwall, Texas. What's that boy's name? Larry. Larry Lee. That same thing will happen to him. But I got news for you. It's not going to happen to Ron. Forget it. <laughs> You're not going to have more members in your church than they got people in St. Louis. But St. Louis is a far cry from Rockwall, Texas. And, but Larry Lee is going to wind up with more people in his church than Rockwall, Texas has in the city limits. And this fellow did. And I went to his church to hold a seminar. And I'd been teaching, you know, if you were here last night, you know how I taught, if you ever listened to my tapes, you know how, basically how I teach. Just basically trying to get you to believe God. Trying to get you to stand on God's word and not take no for an answer. Because God has your answer. I don't, have, I don't know everything, but God does. And so I was teaching along that line for a couple of nights. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the doctor came to me and says, going to call me one morning and says, you know, Brother Norval, after hearing you teach for two nights, I told my wife this morning, you know, he might be able to help that boy. And, he's, and my wife says, I believe he can. I believe Brother Norval could help him. I said, what boy? Well, he says, we have a young boy that's in his early 20s from our church that's intensive care over at the hospital. Now, he was supposed to die last night. The doctor said he would die last night. 
But we call this morning. Now listen closely. Now you need to hear this real bad, not miss a word. We called this morning, the doctor's wife said, but, and we found out that he's still breathing every once in a while. I said, still breathing every once in a while? Yeah. And said, the doctor wants to know if you'd be willing to go over to the hospital with him because the family is setting up over there at the hospital. So he's a sharp young man. They got him intensive care and there's no hope for him at all. He's supposed to die last night, but he's still breathing every once in a while this morning. I said, sure, I'll go with him. Just come over here and pick me up. And I said, we'll go right now. I'll go with him. So the doctor came over and picked me up and we went in to the hospital and went to the intensive care part. And the doctor talked to, and we walked in, we saw all these people sitting there like this. And I said, boy, this is a sad looking bunch if I've ever seen it in my life. But I'll always remember this. The Holy Ghost that lives inside of you is not limited. His knowledge is not limited to your sad face. You understand that? The Holy Ghost does not change. I don't care how sad you look. I don't care what. He never changes. Now listen closely. And the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you when you get born again, he never has any kind of thoughts except victory thoughts. He never thinks about death or defeat. Death and defeat is not in the vocabulary of the Holy Spirit. But Jesus said the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he'll come and teach you all the truth about God. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all the truth about heaven. But he never will manifest himself unless he has scripture for it. The Holy Spirit is sent to the earth to live inside of you and never leave you and never forsake you when you're born again. But he's been sent to the earth to be a performer. And he performs the word of God. He will perform what God's already said. He'll perform the whole book of Matthew for you if you need it or any part of it that you need. And he'll do it for you any time. That is, that any time that you'll believe it. Any time that you could make up your mind and get your faith strong enough that you refuse to let doubt come in. Doubt will damn you forever. Doubt will separate you from God. Doubt will cause your body to be racked with pain and diseases for years and years and cause you suffering for many, many years. Doubt is from the devil, my brother and sister. It's not from God. God has nothing to do with doubt. The book of James says, don't even let that man that doubt me, God said in James, don't even let that man that doubt me think he's going to receive anything from God because he's not going to receive. He's not going to receive, God said. Not going to. Pray until your teeth falls out. You're not going to receive if you doubt God. You can't doubt God. And sit around, sitting around an intensive care room like this, it's what you call first-class doubt. That's the height of doubt. Sitting around somewhere waiting for one of your loved ones to die. You ought to be in the hospital chapel somewhere 
rejoicing in God and throwing your hands up and worship in God and bring them before God and claiming health for him and praising Almighty God and worshiping him and tell the devil, take your hand off of my nephew. Take your hand off of my child. Take your hand off of him. I bind you, you crazy devil. I bind you in Jesus' name. Let that young boy go free. His whole life is before him. I bind you, I said in Jesus' name. I bind you. Go to the hospital chapel. I bind you. In Jesus' name, Satan, I bind you. I bind you. I bind you. I hold his spirit here. You are not going to kill him. I bind you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And you keep on and on and on. You might say, Brother Dovo, I never did do that. It's because you don't know how. Always remember this. You can only do things that you know how to do. Bus drivers cannot fly a jet airplane because they don't know how. The Holy Spirit, my brother and sister, Jesus said, is here to teach you all about heaven and all the Word of God that you'll ever need. The Holy Spirit is the great teacher. He is the great teacher and He's always scriptural. He's a great teacher. Everybody say, great teacher. Great teacher. And so the doctor began to talk to the registered nurse at the door. You couldn't go in. It was locked. You, could, you, you couldn't go to intensive care. But he went there, got the attention of the nurse, and she came to the door like this. He says, well, my name is Dr. So-and-so from a certain, certain church, and I have a friend here that's with me that we would like to come in and pray for a certain, certain boy that's our church. She says, well, I have orders from the doctors that nobody's allowed in to see him. Now listen closely. Nobody's allowed in to see him except his parents. And his parents can only stay by the bedside two minutes at a time. Then they have to leave. Then after a while, they can come back in and stay two more minutes. That's all. Because his breath is nearly gone completely. Laying down unconscious. But he says, my friend here that's holding a meeting at my church, we just want to come in and we'll just let us come in and take two minutes and we won't bother him we'll just stand by the bed and pray and she said well okay doctor she said if you'll just take two minutes you can come in for two minutes two minutes now and stand by the bed I'll come and get you in two minutes he said okay he said brother Noble, we only got two minutes so we walk in now, the young boy is about 21 years old, 22 years old, and he was married to a girl. It looked like she was about 19 or 20. Now, they let her sit by the bed all the time, 24 hours a day. But the parents could only come in for two minutes at a time. Let, let, let the wife sit there all day long by the bed. And I go in, I see this little girl sitting there, you know, 19 or 20 years old. Sad looking little girl. Sitting in a chair like this, looking at her husband. Sharp young man, kind of skin and bones though. Laying there in bed with all this stuff on him. And he was, I never saw a human being breathing like that. Just laying there unconscious. He's breathing like this. <clears throat> Made this kind of a noise. When he would inhale, it'd sound like this. <gasps> Let's see. 
did. After a while, then he'd go, <clears throat> exhale, he'd go. Wait a long time, then. Doctor, the doctor says, Norval, let's pray. So we stood there and agreed and prayed and asked God to help him. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit that knows everything that lives inside of me. So we got through praying, just a real short prayer, and asked the Lord to help him and bless him and touch him. And I'm standing up towards the front of the bed, like this, like, you know, his wife's sitting here in a chair, and I'm standing kind of like this, and the doctor's standing down there, you know. And so, he said, the nurse said to him, it's up, your time is up. So the doctor says, all the time is up. He says, so we just, so we just walked like this. I got towards the foot of the bed, maybe, maybe a, a step or two beyond the foot of the bed, down towards the foot of the bed, a little bit beyond it, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost inside of me jumped and said to me, just as plain, I mean, said to me, just as plain, said to my spirit, just as plain. Mark 11, 23 would heal him. Now listen closely. Mark 11, 23 would heal him if it was obeyed. The scripture never helps you until it's obeyed. Boy, when the Spirit of God said that to me, I wheeled around like this. And I, I went back over to the little girl by the bed, and I said, hey, little darling, I said, listen, the Spirit of God just said to me that, that, the whole, the, that Mark 11, 23 would heal him if he's obeyed. You know what's in there? No. I said, well, it's in there about confession, about confession. I said, you can have what you say. So just sit right here and, and begin to say, my husband will live and not die. My husband will live and not die. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. Thank you, Lord, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. I said, now listen, say it all day long. Don't ever stop saying it. Say it for hours. Say it thousands of times. And then you could rest a little while tonight as soon as you wake up, sit in this chair and say it again. And say it all day long. If your voice gets tired, rest a little while and start again. Now, you got it straight? She says, uh, um, I, I think so. I says, well, say it. Say it. L let me hear you say it. She says, uh, thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. I said, you got it. You got it. You got it. She says, okay, thank you. She says, no, 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 you're welcome. But keep on saying it. Show me. Show me you're going to keep on saying it. Keep on saying it. Keep on saying it. I had to leave. I says, keep on. Keep on saying it. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. And he'll live. The Lord told me he'll live. Don't ever stop. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on. And so I went out, I went out the door, her saying that. Well, I left town uh, one more night. 
I was in the meeting, I think, one, one more night, and the next day that he is still living. So I left town and went to another meeting. And so I go back to that same church to hold another seminar about six months later. I told Ron's father today, I said, Ron asked me to come back to this church five years ago and hold him about a three or four day seminar on the operation of demon power and how, how to deal with the devil. But I never did come back and work it out and do it. You think I ought to sometime? Glory to God forever. Well, it's for sure the devil hates you, Jesus said. He's here to kill, steal, and to destroy. You need to know how to fight the devil. She says, well, Jesus will fight him for me. No, no, I'm not talking about Jesus or God. They ought to get rid of the devil. I'm talking about you. Well, I'm not fighting the devil, you know, because my battle is already won. Uh, yeah, but you have to know, but, but, but see, the devil still attacks you. The price has already been paid. The battle's already won. The price has been paid for your healing, for your freedom. But you have to know yourself who you are in Christ Jesus. And the devil will give you a test like every week so you can find out who you are in him. And if you don't know who you are in him, he'll put all kind of junk on you and your children. He'll have you fussing and fighting in your house. He'll have you doing all kind of goofy, dumb, stupid things. Everything you can dream of. So just learn to bind up the devil. Know the, learn the nature of the devil. And so I, I go back six months later to hold another seminar for that church, that same doctor. And boy, before the, the first night, he said, before Brother Norville comes and teaches the first night, I have a testimony for him that I want him to hear. He said, young man, would you come up here? And I didn't know what it was. You remember, would you come up here and give a testimony? So some young man gets up, walks up the side of the church, walks up like this, you know. Gets behind the pulpit. He says, six months ago when Brother Norval was here, I was in the hospital intensive care dying. No hope for me. I was unconscious. The doctor says there was no hope. But he came in, him and the doctor, our pastor here, and prayed for me. Then my wife said he turned around and said the Spirit of God told him and taught her what to say, how to change the situation. And she said she began to say what he told her and said she said it thousands of times and thousands of times. Thank you, Lord, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. Always remember this. Whatever you give God thanks for, before you see it, He'll let you see it. Didn't you know that? Everything you give God thanks for out loud without shame, before you see it, He'll let you see it. I mean, it's something He's promised you in the Bible. I don't, don't go out here and say, I thank you, Lord, for making me the governor of Missouri. Thank you, Lord, for giving me all the property in downtown St. Louis. Well, he don't promise you to be governor in the Bible. He don't promise you the property in downtown St. Louis either. I said what he promised you in the Bible. Don't start thanking God for wild, crazy things. Anything God's promised you, he'll give it to you. Or if you desire it and you can handle it, he'll give it to you. Not only what you need, He'll give you a lot of things if you'll thank Him for it, if you can handle it. He will make you rich financially if you can stand it. But now if you can't handle money, then He won't do that. If money drives you crazy, makes you sin, makes you backslide, then He won't do that. And said, my wife began to obey that. And she said, and I began to get better slowly day by day by day by day. Now listen closely. 
He said, now then, I am completely healed, and I am the youth leader of this church. Glory to God forever. And so I talked to his wife a little bit later, and I said, now listen, honey, let me ask you a question. How long did you confess that before you saw any kind of improvement at all in him? Well, she said, Nova, when you and the doctor came in there and you told me that, I was just sitting there waiting for him to take his last breath, and so was all of his relatives. But when you told me that, said, I began to obey what you said. And said, I began to thank the Lord for healing my husband. And I began to confess that my husband will live and not die. My husband will live and not die. And I said, now, don't waver in your faith. Keep on saying it. You understand? Keep on saying it. Keep on confessing it. And so uh, she said, all that day and that night and the next day and up towards the next night, I guess probably in the afternoon, about two days went by, I, I began to notice that his breathing was beginning to get a little bit stronger. And I just kept on doing what you said to do. I just sat down in the chair and look at him and say, my husband will live and not die. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. You might say, is that scriptural? If it wasn't, I wouldn't be teaching it. God didn't call me to teach a book that I wrote. He called me to teach the Bible. And the Holy Spirit said to me that, the Holy Spirit said to me, Mark 11, 24, I mean, Mark 11, 23 would heal him if Mark 11, 23 was obeyed. Because, see, God knows the Holy Spirit will perform Mark 11, 23 for anybody. Now, now get that. Don't let it pass over the top of your head. I said, Jesus knows that Mark 11, 23 will heal you, will heal anybody, will bless anybody if it's obeyed. Faith is dead without action. And I always remember this. Well, you might say, okay, Brother Norval, I'm just going to read the Bible then and find some scriptures that covers my case and so I can get all these things. And I'll just say, it's, well, okay, it's mine, I got it. It's mine, I got it. No, that won't work. That won't work. You have to say it like you mean it. God will not honor nonchalant faith. God will not honor general faith from anybody. Oh, I believe God, all right. I believe that the Lord can do anything. That's the first class sign that you don't believe nothing. <laughs> God only honors specific faith. He says, say what you mean. Mean what you say. And besides that, you have to say it for the Holy Spirit is in it from way down deep inside of you because the Spirit and the Word agree. But the word only, the Bible says, the letter only will kill us. You'll just die. You can't quote the Bible any way you want to and expect God to honor it. He won't do that. The, God says, the letter killeth without the Spirit. The Bible will kill you 
without the Holy Spirit. You'll just die, that's all. The Bible says, God says, the letter killeth without the Spirit. The Spirit and the Word agree, my brother and sister. The Holy Spirit and the Bible agree. When you confess any scripture, honey, I don't care what it is, just pick one. When you confess any scripture and say, it's mine, I got it. And if you'll show God that you won't waver, the Holy Spirit will absolutely, every time, perform it for you. He'll perform it. The Holy Spirit's a performer, my brother and sister. He's a performer. You understand that? Mark 11, 23. You don't know what it says? It says exactly what I just taught you for about the last 15 or 20 minutes. Read. This is Jesus talking to you. The bottom part of 22, it says, have, Jesus said, have faith in God. Now notice, notice the verse 23. Let's read it real slow. Jesus said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things, things, everybody, everybody, look down there and where it says, but shall believe that those things take your pen for God's sake, for your business sake, for your children's sake, for your body's sake, and underline things. Underline the word things. If you'll underline that, that will help you keep from the devil talking you out of your case. Well, it might not be for you. Did you ever stop and think about it? It might not be for you. You know, your case might be different. It might not be the Lord's will to heal you. You know, there are some cases that it just might not be the Lord's will to heal. Isn't it, Brother Norval? I don't even answer stupid people like that. I just go... <laughs> if you believe like that, I don't know how you ever find the church. That's the dumbest stuff I ever heard in my life. You talk about a false doctrine and false believing. You believe falsely, my brother and sister. You'll just die, that's all. You'll suffer all your life. Well, I got news for you. Anything that Jesus says in this book, it's not false. It is true, my brother and sister, whether you believe it or not, or whether I believe it or not. Of course, I believe it. It's true, I'm telling you, it'll work for you. It'll snatch you out of the jaws of death and set life into you. It'll set you on a high hill. It'll set you, I mean, you'll feel like you got new shoes on. Glory to God forever. I mean, you can walk. Oh, I got new shoes on myself. <laughs> Praise the... That's just the first time I've ever worn them. Somebody bought them for me last week. I spoke in Kansas County last week. I got blessed so much. When God bought me a heart after and Mark suit. When God bought me two pair of shoes. When God bought me two belts. This is a snake belt I got on, brand new. I said, dear God, Brother Hagin, I fool around you and I get blessed so much I can't understand it. <laughs> so, well, that's the way it goes, Novel, you know. Blessing of the Lord is free and flows like a river. But you have to you get connected up with people that gets blessed. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Everybody say things. things. Covers, my case. Covers my case. See, if you believe the other way, well, don't you believe, normal that sometime there might be somebody sometime, you know, just one person. Don't you believe there should be one person sometime that it might not work for. I mean, it, did you ever stop and think, Norval, it might not be God's will for that person. Did you ever stop and think about that? I said, all the days I was Baptist, I thought about it all the time. <laughs> but since I've been delivered from Baptist and you both, I don't never think about it no more. <laughs> Thank God forever. Jesus said, those things. Well, those things what? Now then, I'm glad you asked me. Those things? Oh, you mean those things that's promised to me in the Bible. Right, Brother Noble? Right, well, that's part of it, but that's not all of it. 
but believe those things which he saith. Brother Norval, I believe. No, you don't. Unless you say it, you don't believe. You're mentally believing God, and that won't work for you. You're supposed to Bible believe God. You're not supposed to mentally believe God. You can't mentally believe God. You're supposed to Bible believe God. You're supposed to have Bible faith, not head faith. You're supposed to have Bible faith, spirit faith on the inside of you. Faith comes from down here. When I teach the Bible, I don't never think in my mind what I'm going to say. It just comes out down here. I can stand up here for hours and never even think in my mind, keep my mind quiet. I don't even think what I'm going to say. It just comes down here. You hear a voice coming out of me now? Well, it's jumping on the inside of me right now. Can't all the way till the voice comes out so I can say something else. Victory, victory, victory. It's what you call being called. It takes a long time to get like this. <laughs> Glory to God forever. Those things which he saith, which he saith. Everybody, now I want you to underline, he saith. Take your pen, underline, he saith. Now then, right over from that, find a little space there, right in there means me and point a little arrow over to he saith. Means me. And write a little arrow up and down through there. You can write one. My Bible looks like a bunch of chickens lived in it for years. <laughs> which he saith, believe that those things which he saith, not somebody else for you, say it yourself. What do you mean? You said the girl, his wife, said it for him. Yeah, but when you're married, you're one flesh, my brother and sister. You're one flesh, not two. You can get healings for each other. I mean, you can't make God heal your mate, but if your mate wants to be healed, you can. You can get God to heal your mate if your mate wants to be healed. Of course, you could pray and confess if your mate says, I don't want to be healed, and I don't believe this kind of stuff, and yeah, 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 yeah. But after a while, I just said, well, go ahead and die then. <laughs> if you're not going to believe, I can't help you, and God can't help you. <laughs> well, I don't know if I believe this or not. I said, well, make up your squarely mind what you believe. Do <laughs> you believe the Bible is true? Do you believe in Jesus? Oh, well, yeah, I believe Jesus is real, you know. I mean, you know, don't everybody... I have a motel down in Crystal River, Florida. I have a mission work down there, you know, and I have an auditorium my build down there, you know. And, uh, and, and a fellow come in, and I have, a, I have a Christian people that runs the place for me. And a fellow came in here a while back, you know, just floated in, you know, from there in town. I mean, he, they didn't know it, but he come in. And so the lady began to witness to him. And she says, well, sir, she said, uh, are you saved? Are you born again? Are you, do, do, you, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, oh, yeah. He said, oh, yeah. He says, I was born right here in Crystal River, Florida. <laughs> she says, no, 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 sir. No, 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 I don't, I don't mean, I said, I said, are you a Christian? He said, oh, yeah, sure I am. He said, I was born right here in Crystal River, Florida. I just told you. I said, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about are you born again? Are you a Christian? He said, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. Sure. He says, I was born, I told you I was born here in Crystal River, Florida. Right here in Crystal River is where I was born. Sure, I'm a Christian. <sighs> she said, sir, you don't get it. She says, I mean, do you know God? Are you a Christian? <laughs> yes, lady, I'm a Christian. I told you I was born right here in Crystal River, Florida. I, this, this is in America. This is a Christian nation. Sure, I'm a Christian. I was born in America. <laughs> now, you see how flicky the devil is? Boy, I mean, you, you, you really meet some squirrely people, don't you? 
Dear God in heaven, shall believe those things which he saith. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Believe those things which he saith? Yeah, he saith. Everybody say, he saith means me. He saith, means me. He saith shall come to pass. Oh, my God, this bottom line. I ought to read this bottom line, if you want to know the truth about it. I ought to read this bottom line, and we ought to get up and run around the building, screaming. Glory to God forever. I want you to look at what Jesus says. Do you believe Jesus is a liar? You believe he tells the truth? Well, look what he said here. He said, those things which he says shall come to pass, he, everybody say he means me. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Say that again. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Point to your tongue this time. He shall have whatsoever he saith. I point towards your mind and say, not think, not, think. not believe only. Jesus said, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Say, Jesus said, I shall have whatsoever I saith. Glory to God forevermore. Just so you make the devil mad and make religion mad and make tradition mad, just raise your hands and shout. Glory to God forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. said to me, they got it, they got it. He said, he said stop, stop. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, you know, you know how we, you know how we squirrely human beings are. I had the service all planned tonight, and I was going to do this. I had some more teaching I was going to give you, and I was going to do this and do that and do that. But the Holy Spirit says, "No, no, they got it. Stop teaching. Stop right there. They got it. They got it. Get them to obey it." Now listen closely. Listen, listen closely. You, if you're sick, got anything? I don't care if you got a crooked toe. Run down front and begin to. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I can have whatever I say. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed.
Now then, if the surge is over, now then, be like the little girl sitting in the hospital by that bed when there's no such thing, not even one chance in 10 million for her husband. He was only breathing every once in a while. There was no such thing as help for him except the Holy Ghost. Amen. Think about it, my brother and sister. The Holy Spirit and one verse of Scripture. The Holy Spirit and one verse of Scripture restored a marriage and restored life and made a happy home. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I started to tell you a while ago, and I forgot it. I sat back down and didn't tell you a few minutes ago what the Lord told Brother Hagin. I told you what he told me concerning worship. Now, Brother Hagin made a statement last week at the camp meeting, and the Spirit of God was on him strong. And he made a statement last week, and I'm going to tell you what he said. And he said, I mean, recently, in other words, the Spirit of the Lord came up on me and, and said to me that most churches, even the charismatic movement that's on the earth now, now listen closely, they know, this is, this is really, this is going to hurt you and jar you. They know a little bit about praising me and nothing about worshiping me. Praising him is when you lift your hands and all of you just praise the Lord and praise the Lord and rejoice. Now, it's scripture to praise the Lord. God wants you to learn how to praise him and he also wants you to learn how to worship him. Amen. Worship and praise are two different things. You just lift your hand in time and praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You say, I just feel so good and God, I want to dance. And just praise the Lord with a dance. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I just want to praise the Lord because I love him and feel good in God. I just want to praise him and praise him. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Let's sing four or five more songs and just praise the Lord. Well, God said, you better praise me. If you don't, I'll have the trees to cry out and praise me. But it's all a different thing than praising the Lord and worshiping him. <clears throat> That's when you praise him. Usually what you do before service, you'll praise the Lord. Praise His wonderful, blessed, holy name. And God likes it. That's wonderful. But now when you start worshiping God, that's an altogether, as the old world they say, goes, that's an altogether different ball game. You got to shut yourself in with God. You need to get quiet before God and confess, God, I believe that you are God and there is no other. Oh, God. Oh, God, I worship thee, oh, God, because of thou art God. I worship thee, oh, God, because thou art God. I worship thee because thou art God. In Jesus' name, I worship thee, oh, God, because thou art God. I worship thee, oh, Jesus. Now, the Bible says that the little child shall lead them. And over here is... Four or five girls just knelt down before God on the, on the carpet and beginning to worship God. And the surge of the Spirit that came a few minutes ago, that's, that's to impart truth to you and get, let you see a spark of light as truth. It's like a, a fire of flint that comes to your eyes and to your spirit from heaven. But after you see it, you have to obey it. Before we get into the steadfastness and confessing tonight, the Lord showed me exactly what to do there a few minutes ago. Just quietly now, bow to your knees before God and just worship Him. Out of your spirit, way down deep. Oh, God, I worship you. Oh, Lord, I worship you. Oh, God, I worship you, Lord. I worship you, the true and living God, Jesus. And God, there is no other God except you. All other gods are false. Oh, Jesus, you 
are the true and living God, and I worship thee, O oh God. Oh God, I worship thee, O oh God. Lord, I worship thee. Oh God, I worship thee. And I know thy name is worthy to be worshiped and worthy to be praised. Oh God, I worship you. I'm not asking you for anything, Jesus. I worship you because that I love you. Oh God, I worship you because that I love you. I worship thee, oh God. I worship thee, oh God, and I lift thy name above the smog and fog of this world. I worship thee, oh God. Thou art God, and there is no other. Thou art God, I said, and there is no other. Oh God, I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. God, I worship you, and there is no other. I worship you, and there is no other. God, I worship you, and there is no other. Thou art the one and only true God, and I worship thee, O Lord, we worship thee, God. We lift thy name above this world. Oh, God, we lift thy spirit. Oh, and thank you, Lord, for thy spirit. We lift thy spirit up in the high plane of operation that we can accept the word of God. Oh, we worship thee, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. We hold them high esteem. We hold them in high esteem. We worship thee, O oh God, Jesus. We worship thee and praise thy wonderful name. O oh God, we worship thee. We worship thee, O oh Lord, and praise thy wonderful name. O oh God, we worship thee and praise thy wonderful name, Jesus. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Because thou art a great God. And you love us so much. And you want to give us everything. And I claim my rights. In Christ, Jesus. in Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus said, if I would believe those things, those things which, I say, which I say shall come to pass, I shall have, I shall possess, I shall own, I shall have, Whatsoever, whatsoever I, I saith, and I saith, and I saith none, of none of my children will go to hell. I saith, I saith none of my children will go to hell. Even you single girls and boys, because you may get married sometime and have children, you're wise, very, very wise. But you begin to obey God now and say, I saith, I saith that none of my children will ever go to hell. Go to All of my children will go to heaven. Go to heaven. And I believe I'll have, I believe I'll have whatever, I whatever I saith. And I saith. That I am healthy. I am healthy. I am healthy. I saith. I saith. No disease can stay in my body because I curse you in Jesus' name. And I command you to just die 
and disappear. And get out of my body. Cancer, you must die. Any affliction must die. Get out of my body. Because I believe that I can have whatever I say. And I say my mind is clear. I say I am free. In Jesus' name. I say I am healthy. And I'm not sick. I say I am healthy. I say I am healthy. I say I am strong. I have a right to get what I say. Because Jesus said, if I believe those things which I say, they shall come to pass for me. And I shall have whatever I say. And I say, I got victory in Jesus' name. And I'm happy about it. Well, I think I'll shout again. Stand up and shout. Now then stand up and shout. You know, you will meet people around the country, you know, I don't know, what, I don't know what they use for brains. They must have went to a school where they didn't learn to read. But sometimes you meet people around the country, and they'll say, well, I'm not confessing business. I don't know about that saying business stuff. Now listen to me closely, my brother and sister, and listen closely. I'd rather steal something is to say that. You can get forgiveness for stealing. You make fun of the Bible, you may have to wrestle with months to even get forgiveness for it. You start making fun of the Bible, it's like a curse that comes up on your life. All kind of goofy, strange things begin to happen to you. Jesus, the head of the church that shed his blood for you, comes along and says, don't let the devil put mountains on you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and get away from me. If he'll believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, Jesus said he can have whatsoever he saith. Jesus said that, not Norval Hayes. Jesus said that. Amen. Then if you come along and say, Well, I don't know. Speak slight of it. I don't know about that say, but it's, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, I'm telling you, I did the steal something is to say that. You make fun of the Bible, and I'll guarantee you, <laughs> the Bible plainly tells you it's like a curse that'll come up on you. Don't never make fun of the Holy Ghost. The Bible was written by the Holy Ghost. In fact, if you push it too far, if you push it too far and make fun of the Holy Ghost, the Lord says, there will be no forgiveness for you in this life or in the life to come. The Bible was written by the Holy Ghost. You have to watch yourself about making fun of the Bible. You're making fun of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus said you can get forgiveness for all kinds of things. But you start making fun of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus said, you better watch it. He warned you, and he warned you strong. He said, you better watch it. You better watch it. Be for you in this life are neither in the life to come if you make fun of the Holy Ghost. Watch yourself real close. Make sure you read the Bible before you start making fun of it. <laughs> the proof of the pudding is in the eating. You ought to know that, don't you? I mean, how do you know? 
How do you know that a place serves good steaks until you go eat one? How do you know that a seafood restaurant serves good shrimp or fish until you go eat it and find out for yourself? When you go eat it, and then you say, oh, that's good, that tastes good, that tastes good. See, the proof of it is in the eating. The proof of it is what it produces. It's in the eating. And the Holy Ghost told me in a hospital, intensive care room, not just a patient, a bad patient, one that was breathing every once in a while. The doctor's been saying for a couple of days, every breath could be his last one. God, he's unconscious and just breathing every once in a while. Doctors already told them all, said, well, what he'll do, he will inhale like this. <gasps> or after a while, he'll, he'll exhale like this. And the doctor says, and that's the way it'll be. There will be no more. Every breath could be his last one. There is no such thing as hope for him. And that's the reason the families look sad. But I had to teach you a Bible lesson of truth. But when you go in a place like that, don't never show the family how spiritual you are by making fun of their sadness. The Bible says when they cry, it's okay to cry with them, but tell them the truth while you're crying. Put your arms around them. They have a son in the intensive care room. It's going to, every breath's going to be his last one. It's scriptural. Put your arms around the father and the mother. Pray and see if the Holy Ghost says anything. If the Holy Ghost says something, obey him. This is for anybody. You say, well, would the, would the Holy Spirit have healed him? Oh, no. The Holy Spirit would not have healed him. He would have died. The Holy Spirit told me, said, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, would heal him if it was obeyed. Because the Holy Spirit knows that he's been sent here to perform the Bible. And if any human being would confess the reality of Mark eleven twenty three, 23, then the Holy Spirit already knows that he's going to perform it. He will perform it. Or any other scripture, for you or anybody else, for you or anybody else. The Lord let me know one time. He said, son, my children love me. You people standing here in the aisle, or all of the congregation, all of you that was raised as Baptists in your life, hold up your hand. Okay? How many was raised as Methodists? Hold up your hand. You were raised as Catholic. Hold up your hand. And I could go on, I could just go on and on and on. Presbyterians. If he was raised as a Lutheran, hold up your hand. I could go on from denomination. And they're all good. They all teach good things about God. If you've ever been there, you know that. It's not the idea of the Southern Baptist movement where I come from. It's not there that they teach a bunch of stuff that's wrong. I never hear the Southern Baptist teach a bunch of stuff that was wrong. They just leave you know, everything besides salvation, out. It's what you leave out. It's what you don't know that'll rob you. It'll rob you. If you don't know it, it'll rob you. Not knowing Mark eleven twenty three 23 was going to cost that boy their life. Well, I knew it, and the Lord showed me how to do it, and I'd run back and got her to confess it because Jesus said you could have what you say. Now, two things. Boldly, my husband will live and not die. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband will live and not die. 
Now, then I want you to keep your mind quiet. You came down here to get us. You came down here to surge of the Spirit of God, bringing truth to you. Brother, if you could have that kind of surge all the time, you could believe God. I mean, you know, Abraham have to start in the first grade again. Amen. Start learning about faith. When a surge of the Spirit comes up on you, my God, you believe God for anything quickly. But when the, when the Spirit of God kind of lifts from me, your name is John Smith, and you live on Spruce Street. <laughs> and I eat bacon and eggs for breakfast or cornflakes. You're just a human being living in St. Louis. But the Holy Ghost lives inside of you. That's where you got to make up your mind that you have to live by the Word and confess. I don't care what you feel, see, or think. It don't make a difference about that. That means nothing. That means 15 cents worth of nothing. What you feel, see, or think. Go by God's Word. Health is promised to you, and you know it is. By the stripes of Jesus you were healed. Now then, I want you to get strong before we leave. I want you to sit there. I want you to stand up straight. Kind of push your shoulders a little bit back. Act like you're somebody. Stand up straight, kind of like a soldier would, you know, just bless God, getting ready for the battle. Keep your mind sharp and alert. Everybody say, the Lord God lives in me. I'm a believer of His Word. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen closely. I want you to sit slowly and strong, just like the girl did. She said, day by day by day by day. I sit by his bed and sit it thousands of times a day. I watch Norval. I watch the Holy Spirit heal him a little bit today. And a little bit tomorrow, and a little bit the next day, and a little bit the next day, and a little, little bit the next day, a little bit the next day. I said, how long was it until his breathing was totally normal? She said, about two weeks. Did you get that? About two weeks and his breathing was kind of normal, you know. Just not taking no for an answer. My husband will live and not die because Jesus said I can have whatever I say. And I say that my husband will live and not die. You have to bypass your mind to do that. Bypass your mind and stand on nothing except God's Word and just because God said it. Not what you think. Don't think. Please don't think. For God's sake, don't think. <laughs> Say it because God said to say it. And no other reason. You don't, you don't need any other reason. Jesus said, if you believe those things that you say shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. Now then, I want you to get strong. I want you to look anything that tries to destroy you straight in the face. Tonight, for healing. This is the way tonight you're going to make up your mind to get your healing tonight. Tomorrow night will be a different way. I may lay hands on you, but I'm going to obey the Holy Ghost, whatever he says. I'll do whatever the Lord says do. Some nights he tells me to lay hands, sometimes he tells me to don't. Sometimes he tells me to this, sometimes he just runs down front and starts screaming out, I'm healed. I don't know. It all depends on what the Spirit of God wants tomorrow night. That's all I want to do tomorrow night is obey God. Amen. If I obey God, it'll be good for you. If I don't obey God, you'll begin to wonder yourself, you know. I don't want to leave you tomorrow night. I don't want to come to this church for three days leaving you in a stage of wondering. In God, there's no wondering. There is victory. According to His Word, there is victory. Are you ready? Yes. Are you still a soldier? Yes. Do you still love Jesus? Yes. Do you still believe in Him? Yes. Say, thank God I am well. Thank God I am well. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. For healing, me. for healing me. Look up to heaven and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For healing me. For healing me. I, will I will live and not die. I have health. I have health. Instead of sickness. Instead of sickness. All, affliction All affliction. In my body. In my body. Must disappear. Must disappear. I can have whatever I say. I can have whatever I say. And I say. And I say. 
that all affliction, that all affliction must, disappear must disappear from me. From me. And, I say and I say that the Holy Spirit of God, Spirit of God will, replace will replace that with good health, with good health and, strength. and strength. I am strong. I am not weak. I am healthy. I am not sick. I have a right to call those things that be not as though they were. According to Romans 4, 17. And Jesus said, I can have whatever I say. And I say, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, healing me. is healing me right now. Right now. I, say I'm I say I'm healthy. Health is mine. Health is mine. All, disease All disease must disappear. Must disappear. I, give no I give you no choice. I remember, remember. Disease. disease. Remember what I'm saying. What I'm saying. I can have. I can have Whatever I, say, Whatever I say, and I say, I, say, I, am I am healthy, I am strong, I am not sick, and I'm not going to be. God's given me health God's give me and, health. and prosperity. And prosperity. God's, give God's given me health through Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus. and prosperity. prosperity. God says in the Bible, we human, beings, we human beings, his choice vessels, his choice vessels if, we live in sickness, if we live in sickness and affliction and, affliction, and live without prosperity, and live without prosperity God, says, God says, we are living in the dust. In the dust. I, refuse I refuse to live in the dust. I claim victory. I, claim victory. I say I am prosperous. I say I say money will come into me to pay all of my bills and money left over to give to the church and buy me what I want. I say I am prosperous. I say I am healthy and not sick. I say I'm a servant of the Lord. I will put spiritual things first. I will, things first. I, will God first. I will put God first. And He will, and he will add, all add all other things to me because I say He will. He will. And He is God that he, he cannot lie. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And I believe your words, Jesus. Your words. And from this night forward, I'm going, to confess I'm going to confess what you've promised me, you've promised me in, the Bible, in the Bible, and you will give it to me, because you said you would. You said I can have whatever I say. Whatever I say. Thank, God Thank God for my mouth, for my mouth. that's going to get me victory. Get me victory. Glory, to Glory to God forever. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. <coughs> just, <coughs> just so you can please Jesus and make the devil mad, just think of three or four things that you need and just start confessing they're yours out loud to yourself. Just make the devil mad. Just make the devil mad. Make the devil mad. Ara ba kosa ta 
Say, thank God I am healed. I am healed, Satan. Thank God I'm healed, I said. Make a, make a believer out of the devil. You might say, how you do that? You make the devil believe that you believe what Jesus said. Make the devil believe it. Make the devil believe it. You have to make the devil believe it. Make the devil believe it. All right, let's try to get somebody saved before we leave. So go to your seat, confess and thank God I am healed. Thank God I am healed. Blessed be his holy name. 